Hello and uh, good morning and welcome to another video. Um, we're going to do a couple of videos over the next two or three videos, if that makes sense. Um, I'm wanting to try and bring something a bit different. At the moment we've got the coronavirus which is absolutely going mental in the world at the moment and uh, the UK is starting to sort of bring itself down, lock things down a little bit. Um, me and the good lady wife, Mrs C, they're there. Um, we're on uh, a bit of a... Uh, What's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Social isolation. Social, no, we're not isolating, so, no, are we? Social distancing. We are, that's what we're looking for. That's the word I'm looking for. We are social distancing. This video today is going to be about focus stacking. And I've got the help of uh, Mrs. C. She's going to help us out. And I'm going to explain it in very simple, basic Compton terms. None of this technical jargon. It's not going to be anything like that. It's going to be very simple and down to understandable language. Further ado. Without further ado even, <laughs> we're gonna get going, lock up the door, go and get some fresh air, because it's a gorgeous, gorgeous day out there. And uh, yeah, while one camera, still... one lens, why what? While we still, while we still can, yeah, because if we, have a, if we have a full lockdown, no one's gonna be allowed out at all anyway. So I'm avoiding going out in the car, we're avoiding going to the built up areas and the popular areas. Um, we found out on Facebook yesterday that uh, Snowdonia was absolutely crammed full of people Bad idea. Totally Lock it down. Irresponsible, Very irresponsible. Way, yeah, totally. You just got to lock down. Keep yourself distance away from other people. And just go to places. If you're going to go out, go to places where there isn't anyone, where you're not going to get into trouble, where you're not going to get stuck and involve other people that don't want to get involved. Uh, we don't want rescue services going out and stuff like that. So we are staying in our neighbourhood, literally within a, a mile or so's radius of where we are now. So uh, yeah, come on, let's get going. Gotta be done guys. Safety first and all that. So uh, yeah, this is the uh, the important bit. Safety first. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Push! <laughs> oh, you made me stop now. So we just come down the lane and we 
just on the back of Dorfall Park at the moment, just over over a cattle grid, which is a big testimony for the old Osmo. And uh, yeah, no, this is quite nice, it's quite refreshing. I've been doing a bit of exercise bike, so this is a, a refreshing change. This will do for um, focus stacking, babe. So I'm gonna get off the bike now, and uh, I'm gonna put me bike against a post, and I'm gonna try and explain to you how to do focus stacking, which shouldn't really be a problem. I've got a good idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, this should work quite well. It's a nice little area, there's a long path as you'll see in a moment. And uh, yeah, I think all in all, quite a good idea. And hopefully you'll pick up the basic simpleness of uh, how we do focus stacking. The only thing I will say is that um, you kind of need uh, Lightroom or Photoshop that's or that's what I know anyway so uh, right I'm gonna pull up here Denise has found a nice post and uh, let's get the camera out <laughs> right so we have got the M50 out. I've got my camera on a tripod. As you can see, I brought three tripods with me. That's so we can do a bit of video and stuff like that. Our bikes are parked nice and uh, centrally there. This is going to be our first marker point. I'm going to put a, a line here. As you can see, I'm going to mark the pavement down there. That's going to be our first point for Denise to stand on. Then we're going to walk this way. And I'm just guessing at the moment without getting the camera out. But I'm going to put a here on this cross there, so we've marked a cross there, and then we're gonna walk up a bit further, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get Denise to stand a bit further up here. This way, I'm gonna have three points on the camera, let's say about here. Yeah, let's, just, let's just try that. Uh, so we're gonna put a point there, and then maybe a little bit further back, depending on how if I can get the focus into work in the way I'm thinking of. I've got it in my head, I laid in the bed last night thinking about it, so I kind of understand how I want to explain it to you, but it's going to be a bit of jiggery pokery to make it actually work. Um, I could do with three people really, but I haven't got three. Um, I've only got us. But what I could do, what I could do, I might try a different way and then use a focus stacking as in the bikes as a focus point, Denise as a focus point in a distance and then me halfway and use a self timer. That might be a really good way of doing it. But this is Compton style. This is nothing, this is not about the photograph. This is about explaining what we're doing. Right, so I'm gonna get the camera set up now and uh, start talking you through it. Right, so I hope you can see the back of the screen, all right? And yeah, look at how dirty my screen is. Um, right, we're gonna set the camera up to ISO 160. Now we're going to drop it down to ISO 80 to get it as low as I can. I need to get as less light in as possible. We're now going to open the camera up to 2.8, f2.8 there. And on the back of the screen, you'll be able to see my focus points. Now I do have the screen set up. I'm going to put the 10 second timer on because this is going to involve me and Denise. Um, so we've got 10 second timer on. The histogram is going to be reading because it's in semi automatic mode. Um, and then we've got focus point. And my focus points are here. So we're going to move the focus point around. We're going to start with simply focusing on the bikes and that's going to be the first point. I'm going to move the tripod out of the way and the camera bag probably and we're going to focus on the bikes. Uh, that's going to be our first point. I've got back button focusing which you probably can't see on the back of the screen. Let's see if I'm going to zoom you out a little bit so you can actually see what we're doing. Let's go a little bit further out so you can see the back of my camera hopefully. There, that should just about do you. Right, so you can see me focus points moving around and then I've got the back button, fo button, button focusing. So the first point is I'm going to focus on this point there and I'm going to lock it down and that's green. Because I use back button focusing, when I hit the shutter button it makes no difference whatsoever. So it's going to shoot at 1600th of a second, so that's going to be a pretty fast shutter speed, but that's what we need at 2.8. So we're going to get ourselves in position and don't forget this is the first point we're focusing on and we're going to ignore the background. So I'm just going to go and move that tripod out of the way and get ready. Right, so we're in place. I'm just going to check my focus, which is right down here on the back of the bikes. So that's my focus point sorted just there. I'm going to hit the button, and we've got 10 seconds now to go and get in position. Get going. Right, stay there. 
Right, that's that shot taken. Now, now I've got a problem. You have to stand on my spot now so I can refocus. Right, so that little experiment sort of worked, but until I get back on the computer, I won't be able to see for sure whether I had enough distance between the front, the middle and the back. I don't really think I did. I mean, at 2.8, you'd think the, sh the depth of field would be quite narrow, but I'm using a 10 mil lens on the camera. No, 16 mil, sorry. So because it's a 16 mil lens, it's not giving me enough shallower depth of field, if you like. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna back the camera up a little bit more. I'm gonna zoom in a bit more so that I can still get the bikes in. And then what I'm gonna do, Denise is gonna take the photographs and I'm gonna cycle down a bit further, take a shot and then cycle right down into infinity and take another shot. That way there'll definitely be three different planes of focus. She's also gonna manual focus this time rather than auto focus to definitely make sure that we're focused on the three points. That's the second plan. Uh, Denise is just on the phone to her daughter because it's his mother's day. So happy mother's day, happy mum, uh, mum one, mum two and any other mums that are out there, happy mother's day. Um, yeah. Let's get this one done. And like I say, we're uh, keeping away from people. So we're out in the countryside. It's beautiful. This is on my doorstep virtually. It's literally, well, not even a mile away from home. A few, well, half a mile, maybe that. So I'm quite lucky in that way. And we've also got the canal on the river as well, which you may have seen if you've seen other videos of mine. So right, enough waffling. Let's get this cycle out and uh, get down there and show you how this works. And again, in all famous Compton style, we've got plan number three. I'm now staying here to operate the camera because Denise hasn't brought her glasses with her. So uh, I'm gonna have to do the camera work and she's gonna do the cycling. So this will be interesting. Let's see if she can get up and down and turn around. Can you hear me, dear? There you go, one woman responding. Right, we have got the camera in the on position. Right, cycle down to the first point, dear. Cycle to the first point, the first point, cycle to the first point. <laughs> Yeah, go on, yeah, you know, it's fine, yeah. It's just, I'm just doing a bit of a, a focus stacking experiment for video. <laughs> right, as you can see, there's other people out, they're all walking and enjoying the uh, area, but I've just been talking to a guy. Uh, where you are now, that'd be just fine. Right, so Denise has moved down now, and what she's doing is, uh, She's in the middle. I'm just gonna have to ignore the other people in the frame. It's just gonna, it's the only way it's gonna be. There are other people out. So the first picture is gonna be taken. I'm focused right down in the foreground now. Um, I'm gonna manual focus as well. And we're focused on the bikes in the foreground. And I'm just gonna, you'll see Denise is well out of focus on the image. And I'll pop the image up there so you can see it next to me. I'm now gonna move the focus point up. And I've just discovered something today on this uh, Fuji, which is really, really good. Even in manual focus, you can still operate the back button focusing, which is absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna have to look through my glasses just so I can get the focus point roughly right. And now I'm focusing on Denise. And uh, she's about halfway through the frame. So I'm gonna do the same again, take a picture of her there. And that means she should be nice and focused. I'm gonna check all this while I'm going this time saves us messing around. Yet the bikes are out of focus and Denise is nicely in focus. Breaker, breaker, lady in pink. Would you like to move on? Would you like to move on, lady in pink? She's now gonna head off a little bit further off into the distance and uh, make herself well out of focus. And she, she's cycling off. She's doing a great job of disappearing out into the distance. And she's gonna keep going. I wonder how far I can get her to go before I tell her to stop. Keep going. We need to get her right out of the way to get her right out of focus. She's going, she's going, she's going, she's still going. <laughs> and she's still got, she's, she could be pretty much. You're probably not far off there. I would have thought that's plenty far enough to be out of focus. Right, so I've just got her to stop. And uh, you know what, I keep going, I have it. I keep looking at you in the lens over there and you're here in front of me. Right, let's have a look at this. Let's uh, go back in here. I'm gonna move my focus point up and I'm not sure if she's overlapped where she was before, um, but I'm focusing right down in the distance and I'm gonna manually focus as well, just to make sure that the focus point is moved right down to the, to the back of the, right to the back of the image all the way down there. Hit the button, two second timer. And at 2.8, F2.8, these are definitely gonna be out of focus. Breaker, breaker, lady in pink. Would you like to move on? Would you like to move on, lady in pink? She's now gonna head off a little bit further off into the distance and uh, make herself well out of focus. And she, she's cycling off. She's doing a great job of disappearing out into the distance. 
He's going to keep going. I wonder how far I can get her to go before I tell her to stop. Keep going. We need to get her right out of the way to get her right out of focus. She's going, she's going, she's going. She's still going. <laughs> and she's still got... She's, she could be pretty much... You're probably not far off there. I would have thought that's plenty far enough to be out of focus. Right, so I've just got her to stop. And uh, you know what? I keep going, I have it. I keep looking at you in the lens over there and you're here in front of me. Right, let's have a look at this. Let's uh, go back in here. I'm going to move my focus point up and I'm not sure whether she's overlapped where she was before. Um, but I'm focusing right down in the distance and I'm going to manually focus as well just to make sure that the focus point is moved right down to the, to the back of the... Right to the back of the image, all the way down there. Hit the button, two second timer. And at 2.8, f2.8, these are definitely going to be out of focus. Um, you wouldn't shoot like this in um, landscape. You'd normally use about f8, f9, f10, 11. So you're going to get a good depth of field anyway. Um, and what I will do as an experiment, I'll just show you the difference. That's at 2.8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus back down here on the bike, but I'm going to wind this while she's in that same position. I'm going to wind this up to f16 which you probably wouldn't normally use, but I reckon I can get most of the image in focus from this one point, two second timer. I reckon you'll get a lot more distance, but that will show you a definite difference between 2.8, and let's wind it back to 2.8. It will show you a definite difference. Oh, I've moved me zoom in and out. Oh, that was really silly by mistake. Still, never mind. Right, I'm gonna come right back down here in the foreground and focus on the bike. And then I'll take another one down here. brilliant right let's bring her back come on back there we've got a whole horde of people there hit a couple of couple of shots why not got might as well get it all in come on home right so that i think will work i hope i've got enough information there let's head back over to the uh computer back at home and uh <laughs> see what happens to this complete messy explanation <laughs> Hello, and uh, yeah, I know I was supposed to be back at home on a computer, but when I got back to the computer yesterday, um, the images weren't too good. They weren't showing off quite what I wanted to do. Two of them are, and I'm gonna go back and show you them this evening. Um, but yeah, the other images, they just weren't right. I think what it was is the tripod I was using, which is only the little lightweight travel tripod because I was on the bike, wasn't quite sturdy enough and I was getting some vibration on the camera. So I thought I'd pop out tonight after work, and yes, I'm in my work attire, um, I brought the camera out and I'm going to shoot slightly different. I'm shooting down the canal, so I'm back up on the bridge in the canal. I'm just keeping away from people as per normal, as we have to at the moment. And what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to shoot along the canal and I'm going to explain it on the back of the camera. And the camera is in vertical, um, which is a little bit better way of trying to explain how this is going to work because I'm right up close to the bridge, as you can see here, and this is giving me the foreground. So now I can take three images. So I'm going to flip you around. Right, as you can see on the back of the camera, I hope, you can see my f reflection anyway, but uh, let's see if we can get around this little bit of a camera issue. So I'm going to focus, first of all, right down here on the bottom of this, um, the wall, which is the wall right down here in the foreground. And the second image is going to be on the bush just there to make sure that's nice and focused. And then I'm going to focus down in the distance to make sure everything going off into the distance is focused. At the moment, you can probably just about make out on the back of the screen um, that the house is quite out of focus. So my focus area is down here, right down here in the foreground, um, focusing on this wall to making sure this wall's nice and sharp. And of course, I'm going to make sure my two second timer's on this time today as well. So I'm going to hit the button, two second timer. That's going to give me my foreground interest. So 
the foreground down here now is nice and sharp and in focus. I'm then going to move my focus point up to the bush, which is somewhere in the middle of the screen, just about there. So I'm going to just come this side of the bush because it is a little bit further away than the wall. So I'm just going to focus on the front of the bush. And with it in menu focus, you can see that it's starting to, uh, the focus peaking is actually on the yellow now. Is oh, Sorry, on the yellow. The focus peaking is actually in this area here. So I'm going to take another image at that. And there's also a person in the image now, so they're probably going to be in focus which I just add to the image. And I'm going to take another one while she's walking along the pier, walking along the pier, the path, and that would be a nice little bit of foreground interest when it's uh, processed. I'm now going to move the uh, focus point up to the back of the image. This now has transformed everything from the foreground here. It's all now focus peaking in the back of the screen, uh, which is in the back of the image. It's not, there's still a little bit on the hedge, um, you can't avoid getting it all the way through the image, even at 2.8. And I'm just going to refocus on that tree right down there in the background. And I'm going to hit the button again and take another image. That way I've got three images. You see me take the three images. One with a person in it, which is on the mid-ground. Uh, the foreground, which is the bridge, which I'm looking over the top. And then the distance on the tree. I'm going to take a couple more just to make sure I've got something. The sun's going to go down in a minute, so I'm going to see if I can get something with the sun in as well. And uh, yeah. I'll head off back to the computer and uh, talk to you when I get back there. All right, this one, this might actually work a little bit better. Um, what I've actually done on this one is I've got the wall, as you can see the wall behind me here, leading right off in the distance. And this is actually giving me some different focal points because the wall is so out of focus right down in the foreground at f2.8 to the distance in the, uh, where the trees are and the house is over in the distance, there is actually quite a lot of um, depth of field in this image. So, and with this one, I focused roughly on this wall about here. This is giving me um, a point of interest at the, in the foreground or a point to focus on. Then I've gone a bit further up the wall to here, then I focused off in the distance. And between those three images, that should definitely give you some idea of how focus stacking works. I've also bracketed this one, but that's gonna be for I'll, I'll use these images maybe for the bracketing one that I've also done a tail onto the end of this um, for next time. Right, here we are. We are back in my little room. Um, as you can see, I'm sat in front of the computer. Uh, yes, I've got a change of clothes. And the reason being is I got the screen recorder working last night and it didn't show any of the pop-ups and it didn't show me going from Lightroom into Photoshop. So I've got another screen recorder um, I had a word with Greg Snell uh, today and said, what do you recommend? Is there anything that, I that would work? And he told me to try this uh, Bandicam. So thanks to Greg, um, I've got Bandicam that's working and I can now record the screen. So I'm gonna do exactly the same as what I did last night and try and explain to you how to stack these photographs. So I'm gonna hit record and start recording. Right, so we are, um, We've got Lightroom up in front of you, as you can see, uh, Lightroom's here. You've got all these images that I've already taken. The ones from the bike from Sunday and uh, the images I took last night after work. Uh, these are the two images I wanted to show you to start with. These are the two, um, when I tried them, like I say, I weren't sure whether it was working or not and it didn't work very well. So I'm gonna open up the first one. Uh, this image is the one that I took at f16 just to give you that idea of uh, what the image looks like at f16 is quite a good depth of field through the image so it's just to show you how far from the bike to Denise at the back there um, is, is giving me you know that sort of a depth of field on that image and then if I go to the 2.8 one you can see now 2.8 is just ridiculous you just you just wouldn't use 2.8 for uh, landscape whatsoever so anyway let's go back to grid press G on the keyboard right so we're going to use this image and the image next to it and I'm just going to bring them up just to show you the difference uh, the first one is the bike uh, which is nice and sharp and the second one is Denise nice and sharp in the background and the bike out of focus So we we'll go back to grid so you can see what I'm doing While I've got the two highlighted if I right click on either of the images go into edit in Down to open in layers in Photoshop and we'll click on that and that'll take me over to Photoshop And it will take a few moments for it to open up Right, you'll see the first image is dropped into Photoshop and the second one is just coming up down here um, It's just about to pop up and uh, you'll see in this little section just there two images appear and uh, there to be the images we're going to start using right there you go We've got two images two images down the bottom there um, ready to use for the focus stacking so we are going to just take that off of there right we've got one image 
on the top and as you can see down here if you turn this one off it shows the image underneath it so there are your two images that we're going to be working with first thing to do is highlight the two images there are other ways of doing this um, I just quickly will actually just show you with the other way of doing this um, there is another way you can go into this top layer you can put a layer mask on it and then you can go and get a brush put a black brush on and you can actually paint over the top so you can get a nice big brush like so and you can actually paint in the bits you want in sharp in the background so that's one way of doing it painting in the sharp bits you want to keep and uh, working around the image and just basically you can see down in the bottom image there um, where it's black on the top and white on the bottom that's the two images but that's not the way we're going to do it so we'll delete that layer mask we don't want that right this is the way no we're not going to do that we're going to go back and get rid of it altogether that's easier right okay so this is the way we're going to do it so we'll go back to there we're going to select both of the images so you can press control and click on both the images and that'll select them both we're then going to go into edit align as you can see there edit align we're going to click on that and it brings up another box in the box you've got an auto perspective collage we're going to use auto so you can click on auto and click ok and what that's going to do is just align the two images so that the two images are absolutely perfectly in line on their layers as you can see there's a slight little edge down there where it's just moved the camera over slightly right once that's done making sure those are still too highlighted we're going to go down to auto blend layers brings up another box we've got panoramas which I don't use on this one at the moment and we've also got image stack that's the one we want make sure that one's highlighted and not the other one and we're going to click OK this will take a few moments the more images the more alone the longer it's going to take uh, my computer is not the fastest and this is quite basic it's quite simple there's no there's nothing hard about doing this um, and what is if you watch down in this bottom corner again I've just come down in this bottom corner so if you look down here you can see the two images and they're going to jump onto a third image right so we have the top image we can toggle that one on and off it doesn't make any difference if you toggle that one on and off but what i will do i'm going to turn that one off for a moment i'm going to show you the difference you've got a black and a white layer mask it's done an auto layer mask and what the uh, program has done what photoshop has done is decided which parts of the image are sharp and it's kept those parts for you so if we knock this one off it's going to show you that it decided that all that section there was the sharp section and kept that and then if you go to the bottom one, it decided that all this bottom section was sharp and kept that. Ignore the sky because there's not any detail in it. It probably just made a, a guess at what it was doing. And in its, in its wisdom, it's decided that all of that's in focus and all of that's sharp. And all you would do then is click on OK, click Yes, and that'll take you back into Lightroom and uh, your first image will be done. So I'm just going to drop Photoshop down out of the way and it will appear back there in Lightroom. So while it's doing that, because we don't want to go any further than that at the moment uh, let's show you some of these other images there it is it's just appearing now so that's your third image uh, which is all in sharp which is all in focus and sharp right let's going to go to this one the green one as you can see i've got three images there i'm going to highlight all three of these images because i think this is quite a good way of showing you what it want so i'm going to press e which will bring the images up you can see on this image that the first image I took is sharp in the bottom corner. This bottom part of the image is nice and sharp. Um, let's just get a pen to draw with. Let's have a look. Right. So this part of the image here, as you can see there, is nice and sharp. So that's the part we want to keep from that image. If we go to the next image, you'll see that this part of the image is sharp. And just bear with me because I'm just using this program and the pens. So this now we've got this section there, probably this whole plane, which is all sharp. So we've gone from the bottom to the middle now. And again, we'll go to the third image. And the third image, you can see the trees come sharp at the background. So now we've got sharpness right the way down here. So in fact, all of that will be sharp in the background. So that's your three sets of images. Let's get rid of those. So you've got your first image, we've got sharpness at the back where we focus at the back the second image we've got sharpness in the middle where we focused in the middle and the third image we've got sharpness at the bottom where we took those third images right so again we've got three images highlighted down here in the bottom corner I'll just show you where the bottom corner is just in case you can't see what we're looking at we're looking at these three here okay so we're gonna right click on one of them brings up the menu again edit in come across 
down to open in layers in Photoshop. I'm going to click on open in layers in Photoshop and again it opens Photoshop for you and it will bring up those free images so they will take a moment to pop up. Right, you can see first image has appeared down here in the bottom corner again. I'll just highlight it for you just so you can see what it is we're doing. We're working on in this section there. So we've got one image has appeared, the second image is loading and there we go. We've now got three images in the bottom and they're the three images we need to work with. Right, we can toggle them on and off. So if you look at the main screen, we can toggle them off. One brings the middle section up, and toggle off the next one, brings the rear section up. So you can see all three images are down in the bottom corner. Simply highlight them all, pressing control and clicking on them. Again, we go up to edit in this top corner. We come down to auto align, which is here. Click on auto align, auto, okay. And again, this will just align the, the three layers so they all line up together and they all sit exactly on top of each other without any distortion. There we go, that's auto align. You can just see down the bottom there, you'd need a little bit of a crop. Right, again, all three of them are highlighted. So we then go back into edit, auto blend, and we're gonna click on auto blend, keep it on stack images, click okay. And this might take a little bit longer this time, um, but it's gonna work out all the images and work out which parts are sharp, which parts aren't sharp, and it's gonna stack them all together. And I'll show you again in this bottom corner, you'll see them all appear with a layer mask on them. Right, so we are away again. We've now got three images down here in the bottom corner uh, with a fourth one on the top, which is your final image. I'm just going to turn that one off just so you can see what's going on. Keep an eye on this image. You'll see that the first one is going to give us everything from the bottom section up. The next one is going to give you everything from the middle section up. And then the last one, oh, let's click them back over. This is going to give you everything from the back section up. Not the best of images to show this with, but at least you can see down this line, if you follow the line down there, you'll see that everything's sharp from the trees right the way down to the front of the image. And all you've got to do again then is just click close, tick yes, and that'll then open up in Photoshop, in uh, Lightroom, sorry. So we go back to Lightroom, we go back to the grid by pressing G, and you'll see here in the middle of these three images that uh, the fourth one will appear, and there it is and that will be your final working image. What I will do, again, another time, I'm going to um, do another video on how to clone out things like these little signs and how to clone out things like rubbish and stuff like that. So I will do another video for you. Now I can get this to work and I'll show you how to work on things like that. So we'll just do one more quickly, just to run through it. I'll show you what we're doing and then uh, we'll use, let's use, let's use, let's use one, two one two three i think let's try that open in layers okay so as you can see in the bottom there we've got three images number one is sharp in the foreground down here in the foreground number two it's sharp in the middle and number three it's sharp right down there in the back so again i'm going to take all three images this one has got a, an initial problem I'll just turn that off. This guy here, if we're not careful, it'll over, over copy part of him and uh, we'll have to put him back in afterwards. We'll take those three images. Again, we're gonna go auto align, click okay. And there you can go. Uh, you can see there, we've got uh, the images have all popped up and we've got three images there. Um, let's just show you what they're doing. Turn the top one off, this one the same again. We're gonna just toggle through one section, the next section and the third section at the back. The problem we've got is with it is, like I say, this man here has been messed up and if you zoom right in, the guy at the back there, he's now got two boats and instead of one. So what we would do, oh, I've moved the image. So what we would do is we would actually overlay one of the other images and fix this in uh, Photoshop. So I'm gonna show you that on another video. So I'm gonna keep this actual image, I'll keep this Photoshop set up and I'll show you exactly how we would then repair this guy here get rid of that and I've also got, if I go back to Lightroom, I've got another picture here with the boat right in the middle. So we'll get rid of the boat at the back and we'll put the boat in the middle, the bloke running and everything sharp. So I'll show you how to do that in another video. So for now, that's about it. I've showed you focus stacking. It is really simple. I know it's been a long winded version of doing it. I'm not very good at all this computer stuff 
um, but I'll get a bit better I'm sure so anyway till next time don't forget like and subscribe you never know you might learn something from these stupid Compton videos um, on, on how to's in all fairness I'll try and keep it simple even though it is a bit stupid and a bit daft so now next time see you later bye ciao